Our next family is a, again, a group that's been around a long time. Um, it's fairly easy to identify, but it's only represented by a single species here in Kentucky, and that's the Amiidae. This is the family for the bowfin. And there's only one species in the whole family, and it's Amia colva, the bowfin. It's also called the dogfish or the grinnell. And it's a very cool fish again. They have a long dorsal fin, and mostly the males have an eye spot on their tail called an ocellus. They also have barbels in the nostrils. That's a diagnostic characteristic. And they have a guler plate, which is a special bone that not all fish have, but this is um, very prominent uh, underneath the chin of the bowfin. Again, what we see with these uh, ancient fish, a lot of them have the physostomus gas bladder. So just like the gars, these fish can tolerate very low oxygen levels and can gulp air at the surface. The thing about bowfin is, is sometimes they come out of the water. When the males are guarding nests, they can be very aggressive and there are stories of people walking along the water and a bowfin male coming out of the water to threaten them, to chase them off. They can become very aggressive. This makes them uh, somewhat of a good sport fish. They're not a very popular sport fish, but they are gaining in popularity because they are pretty aggressive. So it's a little blurry picture, but you can see in the foreground here that bowfin with that very long single dorsal fin. And you can see the ocellus on the tail. Um, many reasons for having this. Maybe this is to draw the attack of a predator away from the critical face area. Uh, maybe it's just for females to recognize. I'm not really sure. You can see the barbels in the nostrils. That's a pretty easy thing to notice. And I don't know of any other fish that we study that's going to have this. Here's a close-up of the barbels coming out of the nostrils. So um, that's something you can look for. This is the underside of the head, and that's the guler plate. Again, it's very prominent. This is not the only fish that have it, but it's not common in any other fish that I can think of. Um, this can be used to age the fish. Uh, I've tried it. I haven't had a whole lot of luck, but I haven't really worked with it very much. But I know a lot of people use the guler plate as an aging structure. And they can get large-ish. Um, they don't get much bigger than this, but um, they're big. they got a lot of teeth, a lot of muscle, good fight. It's a cool fish. Here's a bowfin male in his breeding colors. You can see the ocellus on there. I want to um, show you this because of the beautiful green color that these males produce when they're spawning. And so here you see the pectoral fin. And uh, that's just gorgeous, a sort of emerald green that we don't see in a lot of the other fish. There's the well-developed ocellus, which shows up more during the breeding season. And what I really like is you get that green color on their tongue and inside their lips. And you just don't see that color elsewhere. And, and I just think that's very cool. Now... It's possible, or some people have confused these with an exotic species called the snakehead. And you may be familiar with the snakehead. This is a fish that um, started, I, I know it's a pretty big problem in the New England in the Northeast, the Potomac River perhaps, and those areas on the East Coast. But I also think down South they're becoming a problem. Um, big problem with the snakehead is, uh, while well, they're very aggressive predators, of native species, but they are very adept at traveling over land to disperse themselves to new water bodies. And they look a little bit like a bowfin. They have the same basic shape, and that's why people can, can confuse them. And they have the mouth full of teeth. They have the long dorsal fin. Um, but it's a long anal fin that will really tell the snakehead from the bowfin. And so I tell you this, I mean, do we have in Kentucky? No, I don't. never heard of any snakeheads in Kentucky. But you always need to be prepared. And if you ever get something that looks like a funny looking bowfin, maybe think about it. And, and maybe it's one of these exotic species. Now, um, one of the characteristics of the bowfin that helps us perhaps 
um, consider this an, an older species or a species that evolved a long time ago um, are its reproductive organs, which are somewhat unique. Uh, for example, in the males, the testes are closely associated with the kidneys. They're not separate from the kidneys. And the ovaries are a little more um, primitive. Um, it's in that the, the eggs and the ovary is not um, like a sack of eggs directly connected to the urogenital opening. And when we dissected fish the other week, we looked at these ovaries of other species and it was kind of like a enclosed sac. In the bowfin, they have what's known as a gymnovary. And this is an ovary where there is a duct from the urogenital opening. It's sort of like a funnel. It's like open on one end and the eggs are just shed into the body cavity. And then they have to work their way into that funnel and out of the body. And here's some examples of these different kinds of uh, reproductive organs. So on the left, this is what I'm talking about where the bowfin testes are connected to the kidney with afferent ductules. And so they both empty out of the same um, your genital tube. But if you look at most species of fish, um, the testes are separate from the kidney and they eventually all come out of the same opening, but they don't really share much other than that. And if you look at these diagrams, you can imagine how, you know, if the bowfin was an earlier fish, you can see how this might over time evolve into where the testes are a separate um, organ that just shares a common opening. Now, if you look at the, the ovaries, again, on the left, you have the bowfin gymnovary where you've got an ovary that, that produces the eggs, but to get out of the female, they have to just be released into the body cavity and work their way down this funnel into the oviduct and then out of the fish. Other species that have this are the sturgeon and the salmon. So there are other species that have it. More commonly, and what we saw when we were dissecting the other week, were cyst ovaries. And this is where the ovary is an enclosed sac that's congruous with the oviduct and the eggs, instead of being shed into the body and then working their way at the oviduct, they're shed straight into the oviduct. So it presumably might be a little bit more efficient at getting the eggs out of the female's body. And here's a bowfin that we dissected. And you can kind of see this gymnovary. And it's not super obvious, but you've got a clear empty tube that just sort of dead ends right there. And you can stick a probe in this tube. And so when the eggs are released, they have to work their way down that tube. Okay, so that's just a little bit about bowfin. And um, again, should be fairly easy to identify. We'll take a look at some in class. Let me know if you got any questions. See you later.